welcome to part number four of our polls application so if you're wondering where we are then just click on documentation and uh, we are on part number four forms and generic views so let us get started let me open up my application so this is our application as of now and whenever i click on any of the question we can see that we have the question on the top and we have a couple of choices at the bottom but we don't have any mechanism by which we can vote on these choices so suppose if i want to vote on yes or if i want to vote on no then how do i do it in order to do this we can use a simple form and that's what they are showing you inside the documentation so the first thing as you can see over here is they are showing how to use a form inside our html template now this form goes inside our polls slash detail.html so what i will do is first let me copy and paste all of the code from the template and then i will explain to you everything line by line so let me just copy this and let us open up our code editor now i want to open up the template of details and uh, we don't want any of this let us take it out and let me paste the new code right over here now let us see what's happening inside this template so the first thing is this is a form and for a form we have normally two methods so this is for the post method and another is for the get method we also have put method and so on but right now let's just concentrate on the method so what happens is whenever a user clicks say for example, if I want to vote on yes, and if I click on yes, at that time, what do I want to do is, I simply want to pass the data or I want to pass my choice back to my server. And since I'm sending data back to my server, that's why the method is called as post. So that means whenever the user clicks on submit, at that time, I want to post the data to my server. And how does the server handle the data? The server is going to forward all of the data to this URL. So the URL is inside our polls application, then by the name of vote. Now, if I open up my URLs, here we can see that we have this URL right over here. And we have given the name for this URL. The name is vote. And this is what we are referencing inside our HTML template. So here it is, go to post application and then go to the URL which has the name of vote. And we also need to pass the question ID. So if you just open up your URLs, here you can see that this URL also needs a question ID. So that's what we are passing it right over here. The next thing, as you can see over here, this is called as CSRF token. But right now, just think of it like a security feature, which is trying to protect our application. The next thing that you can see is we have a regular field set and then we have a legend. So these are your typical HTML tags. And here we have the H1 tag and we are simply displaying the question text inside our H1 tag. After that, we have a tag on line number seven for errors. So that means if we have any kind of errors, at that time we simply want to display the error message and as you can see we want to wrap the error message inside the strong tag and which is further enclosed inside a paragraph tag the next one on line number eight we can see that we are creating a for loop so what we are trying to iterate is we want to get the choice from our choice set and for each iteration we want to create a input tag and we also want to create the label tag so first let us try and see the input tag now the type of the input tag is a radio in case if you wanted to have multi-select it would be a, a different type but in this case we have to enforce that the user can select only one choice that's why the type is radio the next one is as you can see right over here we are giving a name to our, our input and we are saying that the name should be choice I will come to this a little later when we see how we can use views for this form. The next is, this is simply your CSS ID and we are referencing something which is called as your Django 
template tags. So I will show this also a couple of seconds later. The last thing is the value. And inside the value, we simply want to pass the choice ID. So it's just like your Django dictionary. The key would be choice and the value would be right over here. But don't stress too much on it. We will cover this part inside the views. And the next is we want to create a label for our input button. So again, we are saying that we want to create the label for and uh, as you can see the ID and uh, the for ID, they are matching. And the next is what we want to display as our label. So we simply want to display the choice text as our label. On line number 11, we are simply ending our for loop. And on line number 13, as you can see, we are creating a submit button and we simply want to display vote on the button. So that's why the value is called as vote. Now let me save this file and let us go back to the Django documentation and let us scroll a little bit down. And uh, the next part is right over here. So this is the views part. Now this view looks a little bit long and complicated, but there is nothing to worry about it. So for this one, what I will do is instead of copying and pasting, let us write all of this code one line at a time. So it's much easier for you to understand. Just remember that we are working on the view for the vote. So let us go back to our code editor and uh, let me open up my views file and we have to work on vote. So I don't need this line. Let me take it out. So let's create a variable called as question. And here I can simply say get object or 404. Just remember that we had imported get object or 404 on the top. So here it is on line number four. And that's what we are referencing inside this function as well. The first thing is the model that we want to query for. So we want to query for the question model. And uh, now we also need to give the query parameters. So I can say that my primary key or my ID should be equal to my question ID. So what this is going to do is it is going to query our question model for the question ID. And in case if it finds the question, then we have the question right over here. Or if it does not find it, then it is going to raise a HTTP 404 error for us. So now we have the question and the next thing that we want is the choice for which the user has voted. So let us try and create our try blocks. And here we can say that our selected choice is equal to. Now let us see how we can query the database for the given choice. So here we can say that from this question, we want to query for our choices. So here I can say that my from the question, I want you to go to my choice set. And from the choice set, I want to get a specific choice. So I can say get and I want to query with my primary key is equal to. Now this is a slightly tricky part. We want to get the specific choice for which the user has voted. And that data is coming from our HTML form and the method is post. So let me write the code first and then I will explain what's happening. So here I can say that from my request dot post, I want to get the value for the key of choice. Now let me explain what's happening inside this code. Now let me open up my template. So as you can see over here on line number nine for the input tag, we have given the name as choice and the value is the choice ID. So as I said, just imagine this to be your dictionary and key and value pairs. So that's what we are doing right over here. So we want to get the value for the key of choice. And just remember that the key which I put over here, choice and the name that we have given inside the input tag should match. And that's how Django knows which data it is coming inside our request. And since the type of request is a post request, so that's why we are specifying that from the post request, I want you to get the value for the key and the key is choice. So next let us write our except block. Now just try and think what can go wrong. The first thing is maybe we don't have the key of choice or second thing we don't have the selected choice. So inside the except block what we can do is we can create a tuple 
the first error could be a key error the second one could be choice does not exist but for that we need to import choice so let me go to the top and uh, from imports let us import choice as well now let us go down right over here and here i can say that for my choice does not exist so in case we don't have the key of choice or in case uh, we don't have the selected choice inside our database so in that scenario we want to render a specific template the first parameter is our request and we want to render polls detail.html and let us create the context data so the first thing which i want to send back is obviously the question so here we can create a key and we can say question and let us pass the data so remember this question is coming from our line number 29 which is right over here and next we can create a, one more key and value pair so we can say that for the error message and let's assign some string to this one so we can simply say that you didn't select a choice the next is our else block so in case we get a choice what we can do is we can also write the type hints so this is going to be of the type of choice now let us go back to the else block so in case everything is working fine we find the selected choice then we simply need to vote on that choice and what do we mean by vote we simply have to increment it by one so here we can say that from my selected choice dot votes i simply want to add one to it and the next thing is we simply want to save this to our database so we can say that selected choice dot save now remember all of the database queries are lazy so just changing the value will not save the model inside our database that's why we have to explicitly call this method of save now after we have the vote what we can do is we can simply redirect the user to the results page so let me show you how it is to be done but first thing we also need to import one more thing from the top so here i need to import http response redirect and let us go down and here after we have saved to our database here we can say that this time i want to return a redirect now as you can see that the first parameter is the redirect to string so that means it is asking a string to where we want to redirect so here we are going to use a small trick if we go to our urls we have one route for the results which we have named right over here and uh, as you can see this url also takes the question id so what we can do is we can tell django to use a function called as reverse and django itself will build the url for us so let us see how we can do that first let me go to the top so here let us import so we can say from django.urls we want to import reverse and let us see how we can use this function so here what we want to do is we want to build a url dynamically now the reason why we want to create a dynamic url is for example in the future if this path changes then again we have to update the url inside the views and this could be a little bit error prone but if we generate the url dynamically then we don't have to worry and let us see how to do that so here we are saying that we want django to create a url and as you can see the first parameter is the view name so here we can say that i want django to go to my polls application and then i want django to go to a view by the name of results let us go back to the url and let us check for the name yes so the name is results so that's what we are referencing inside our reverse the next thing is this url also needs a question id so after the view name we can simply say that we also want to pass some arguments and here we can simply create a tuple or a list anything will go and we can say that we want to pass the question dot id 
oh let us also use the type int over here so this question is of the type of question let me save everything and i think we are good to go so let us go back to the documentation and see if everything is okay or not so we just completed this views file and uh, i think uh, what we can do is let us go to our application and let us try to refresh and see what's happening so as you can see that the web page have changed now we have a form and the form field is python is easy to learn and the choices are yes neither and no and just because we have specified the input type as the radio button so that's why we have these buttons now let us go back to the documentation and let us see what's happening next so the next part is since we are redirecting to the results page we also need to render the data so we need to update the views and the results.html file so again let us go back to our code editor but before let me just copy this because it's a very simple code let me open up my code editor now remember this is for the results view so let me take all of these things out let me paste all of these things so again what they are doing is they are simply trying to query for the question and they are using the shortcut of get object or 404 and if we are able to find the question then we simply want to render and we want to render polls slash results.html and we simply want to pass the question to our template now let us go back to the documentation so this is the updated code for results.html let me copy this let me open up my sidebar and inside my polls let us create a file called as results.html and let us paste the code right over here now let us see what's happening inside the results.html so the first line is similar to you we simply want to display the question text then we have the unordered list and then we have the for loop and for each iteration of the for loop we want to create a list item and inside the list item we want to display a couple of things so the first thing that we want to display is the choice text followed by a little bit of hyphen and then we want to display the number of words that the choice has got now this part is slightly interesting so what's happening over here is we are using something which is called as django template filters so this pluralize is a django template filter so these filters are used to change the way in which your data is displayed on our template and once we go back and once we render the template at that time i will be able to explain what's happening inside this django filter but for now let us just go with the flow so here we close the unordered list and then we also create another button in case the user wants to vote again and this as you know we are creating a url dynamically now let us go back to our browser and let me refresh the page suppose i want to vote on yes let me choose the yes option and let me click on vote so here it is this is our results page for yes i have created one vote and for neither we have zero words and no also we have zero words now let us go back to the template filter part so what we are trying to do over here is we simply want to show if the words are in plural form or not so in case if we have zero words so this word of word should be followed by s so if we go to the templates so this s that means the pluralized version is being generated by the tag right over here now this django tags and filters are a vast topic and if you want you can go to the django documentation and here we can simply search for tags and here we have the built-in template tags and filters so as you can see django offers a vast variety of different filters and as you get a little bit more experience with django you will understand where we can use different filters but right now just let us go with the flow and uh, keep in mind that we can use different filters inside our html templates let us go back to the documentation and let us see what's happening next so the next part is all about creating generic views and i think we will start with generic views in the next video